to page 10 and look at the issues and opportunities for each of those. Um, so we have um, under housing, at this point, we have issues, lack of workforce and affordable housing, um, abundance of re rental properties, and lack of housing mixture. So if you don't mind, before we, I know we're getting later into the evening, before we lose, start losing people, certainly if you want to follow up with Lighting, or Julia, or Ariel, or Matt, or myself, for us to carry these forward at any time, let us know. I mean, just, you know, we, we're, we're available to you. Don't think that our comments are going to be strictly because you were not or were at this meeting. Certainly there's not to follow up with us. Okay. And, and in general, um, we allocate two hours for these workshops. Um, and, you know, if this is not a day and time that works for everybody, I mean, this, this was, you know, set as the work, first workshop, then we are open to have them at any other location or any other day and time. I mean, we <coughs> start at 5 o'clock uh, on a different day. So what we typically do at the end of this workshop is we set the date for the next workshop. and. We have, a, we have a, a suggestion of the next one being on 2.20, no, on 3, when is the next one, 3.20? 3.21. 3, that's a suggestion for the next workshop, but if that does not work for everybody, if you'd rather have it on a different day, at a different time, maybe earlier, you know, that, that's certainly a, a possibility. We, we don't want so it's, uh, you know, just whatever works for you. All right, so the issues. Um, those were the ones under housing. Did, did you have issues in the community vision document? Not, not so much, right? No. These, these are issues that, that were developed or noted in the last comp plan. Yeah. So, um, Lack of work, workforce and affordable housing was definitely one that was very important to everybody at the time. And it's, the explanation for that is throughout each of the communities, the increasing cost of land has resulted in an observable lack of housing for both low and moderate income individuals and families. Is that an issue that is still um, applicable today? Is that an issue that you guys would like to keep? Do, do we have a report from the Home Builders Association or the Realtors to tell us, you know, what the current rents are? And, I mean, do we have that information to know whether that's true? Matt, it, Matt you have a, uh, the City of Dallas have a uh, Fair Housing Committee. Has that information been bounced off of here? Because what they're asking the questions is that what they have found, they've been meeting now for two years, right. really should be integrated into this. I think it is. Um, I had a ball through to look at it, but side by side, but the city had readopted its consolidated housing plan mm -hmm. here recently, um, which I think is reflected. I don't think these things have changed. I mean, in terms of abundance of rental properties, I actually would put the word overabundance there. Instead of abundance. Abundance sometimes means a good thing. I think the way it was intended here was not a good thing. Well, well, in some report that Corey gave, he said that some huge number of our properties are going to be rentals by, what day was that, Corey? Uh, 2040. I, I don't remember the numbers, but um, our studies, our socioeconomic data study for the year 2040 said that rental properties are going to continue to increase in, in number. I haven't heard the statistics, Julia, but... The city's consolidated plan is going to be probably part of this as reference. It, it's included actually as part of a separate housing element. These these are just um, you know the the whole the whole housing plan is part of the part of the plan. So the goals and issues that were in there are repeated in here. If you look at the right. if you look at the plan, but, but these were still yeah. some goals and some issues that were. Outside of that housing plan, because 
that one is just for the city of Valdosta. <coughs> so we have to make sure that we uh, keep the housing goal and categories outside of that um, plan in, in, the, in the document because Lowndes County in general or Hay Hire or Dasher uh, or Lake Park may have different issues. So we, we still need to keep these in here even though the health consolidated plan for Valdosta is part of this plan. Because only the city of Valdosta is required to have a housing element. Because they're CDBG and title. I'd like to see that opening the statement of the lack of workforce and affordable housing. See, see it tweaked and, and, and incorporate that, as Mr. Jefferson said. But intuitively, if this thing was, was drafted 10 years ago, that was an entirely different economy Correct. than as it is now. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so, and I think we've all seen in town the degradation of our neighborhoods in the last 10 years due, due to this overabundance of, uh, of rental properties. So maybe that's that's even another issue is is the degradation of properties. It's lit up in here, Julie, but I agree with Mr. Dean that it probably shouldn't be separate now. Yeah. So that that you know that that certain, seems to be certainly an opportunity to to do more things with with our uh, our landlords, uh, with our city marshals for enforcement of, of, of things on the streets. Well, it, it, county wide, though. I mean, we we have neighborhoods that have declined in the county too. It's right. not not just city thing. Right. right. So that's what I'm saying. We're we're in a the, we've been hit real hard with with the economic downturn that that uh, we were. It was slow in hitting us because we had a lot of things going on ten years ago. But something we we got to work and strive to come out of on the economic development side. Um, now the degradation of, of the properties, is that just the rental properties that you have noticed or is that even... Um, well, it, it is the transition from, from owner-occupied to rental properties mm -hmm. and those properties are then degrading further due to that overabundance and people scrambling to get rents of any kind for it. Mm -hmm. Well, and with the economic downturn, lots of people became unintentional um, landlords. You know, right. they couldn't sell their house, so they rented it. And, mm -hmm. and they didn't mean ever to do that, and, and they would have been happy to sell their house. No one wanted to buy it or was able to buy it. Understand all those factors going on, but I mean, it, it, but community-wide, it's a, it, it, it's an, it's an opportunity for improvement. And doing it while you're at it, and see this on page ten, the issues: lack of workforce and affordable housing. Workforce doesn't need to be in the housing section. I would say lack of affordable housing. Okay. Workforce issues. Should be <coughs> Now, is that, I mean, given the, the discussion, does, do you still have a lack of uh, affordable housing? If, if you have an overabundance of rental property and people are trying to get any, any rent <coughs> they can, do you, do you still have a lack of affordable housing? Yeah, because the rents are not necessarily affordable. Okay. There's two different phenomena going on. So even though you have an overabundance, the on-the-going rents are still higher than... Okay, so that, that's trying to be, although I think what's happened here in the past two, three, four years okay. is occupancy percentages have been dropping. How, how about housing for sale? <coughs> is there also a lack of affordable housing? I mean, it would be interesting to see some current data on that. Mm -hmm. And all we have really is <coughs> to go back is, of course, the demographic stuff that went into the transportation plan, but also the 2010 census, which is now six years out of it. Right. So it's, it's mainly mainly the rents, but it could also be the for sale. I think what we're 
thinking of now with this receptions that may not be fully supported by <coughs> actual data from today, um, or at least what the trend is in the data, it would be interesting to see that. Um, but again, it, from our real estate and home builders community, they can give us some input mm -hmm. on that, or at least some more educated perceptions. Perception, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, lack of housing mixture, is that still an issue for today's market? Again, perception, I think there is still a lack of housing mixture, but it's not as severe as it was several years ago. Uh, I know back in the earlier comp plan and even versions before 2006, um, when you compared our community with the state or national norms, we had a very low percentage of multifamily or high-density residential compared to other communities. I think that has shifted a little bit. I don't think we're quite up to average yet, but we're closer. That's my own perception. Because we've been building a lot of multifamily in the past eight years. Right. But I still think we're a little bit under mixed. Under mixed. Okay. Um, any other issues under housing that anybody feels we should incorporate into the comp plan? How about opportunities? I, mean, I already took notes when you said this is an opportunity to uh, uh, encourage landlords to upkeep their properties and work with code enforcement and sheriff's department. So we already we wrote that down as an opportunity. Any other opportunities um, under housing that you can think of that you would like to see in the compound? Well, I think that one of the opportunities that Mara really took advantage of was to uh, eliminate substandard housing. Um, she she really took that as a priority and and worked to get either grants or volunteers to fix up houses that you know had folks living in them that just weren't great. So, I think that's still an opportunity for us. And my comment was going to be Gretchen um, Mara's funding source was that held off as an entitlement. And receives funding directly from HUD, mm -hmm. which is an which is an opportunity. I mean, to be able to determine how that funding is used and what portion of the community that housing can be improved. I just feel like that should be should be listed here because not every city has that that opportunity to use that funding. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's a you know that level of expertise and funding and the plan that goes along with that. I think is an opportunity to you know, benefit the housing. Somehow, I think that should be mentioned. And it's kind of, you know, incentive programs, it is an incentive program, but it's much more serious than saying, please do this, Mr. Developer. I mean, it's, they're set up with staff and infrastructure to attack that issue. So, and I mean, something similar to that, it ought to be factored in you know, just the goal statement. The city Council had adopted the goal of eliminating substandard housing for the year 2020, mm -hmm. which they did completely on the right own, completely separate. It's never been listed in the comprehensive plan. Put it in the conference plan because it's even already adopted by one of the governments. I think mean, that's a city goal. Is that is that in so we don't forget about it? Yeah, I'll come right it down. Is that in the um, consolidated plan? I don't know if it's in there yeah, verbatim, it's probably it referenced. Um, I'd like to go back to council records and at least get the exact language that was adopted and see how that compares. Yeah. Well, we, we copied and pasted the goal and objectives out yeah. of that into here, so, I'm, yeah. I'm <coughs> but it, that's basically the call. Okay. All right. So we got, we got quite a few more um, issues and opportunities. Um, so we'll go with those for now.